Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Eric. Welcome to the video. I'm really excited about this one. I, I uh, definitely, when I was starting out, could have used this information. So hopefully uh, you guys like it. And I really would like to hear some comments if uh, from the experienced people out there and the non-experienced and, and just opinions on where I'm at in pricing. I'm going to give you specific pricing for... Uh, a few different places that I've plowed for uh, recently and in the past so what I wanted to do is I want to break down the different types of bidding for snow plowing um, you know obviously there's variations of everything but basically you got hourly pricing and you have what I call zero tolerance a bid for zero tolerance then you have a seasonal bid and then you have per inch bid and one of the things that I want to say and you guys understand is is that it's really important to know specifically what the client wants before you just go out and bid it you know you just go on like plow site and go gung-ho on what someone says so that's why this is a video where I'm not generalizing I'm telling you specifically why it's bid that way and exact pricing that I want for to win for winning a bid. I mean, obviously rates are all over the board depending on where you live. But uh, I wanted this to be a specific video, and here I go. So this is a gas station that I plowed a couple years ago, and this was a zero tolerance uh, place. They're a high-end gas station just I don't know it's just you know their bathrooms are always clean they always like to have a clean uh, environment and and it's just one of the things that you know all gas stations are different but um, they really try to be on top of their stuff so when you go into zero tolerance you're most of the time gonna be it's gonna be gas stations and I've never well actually I have and uh, also uh, health health campuses and hospitals and stuff like that that's where you're gonna get into zero tolerance now the big thing is is you need to know if they want zero tolerance before you go in and give them an hourly price or before you go in and give them a seasonal price and what I call zero tolerance which is not necessarily what you're gonna hear the manager property manager say or the the manager on site there say or whoever you're talking to but you just gotta understand that's what they're talking about zero tolerance is probably the most profitable way profitable way to make money plowing I, I mean I like it the best and what it is is it's it's kind of a variation between per inch and this zero tolerance so what they what the, the qualifications for this place was is um, they don't want it to exceed more than I think it was three inches and really it was like an inch so if you get a three inch snowstorm at this property here you could if you were on top of it plow this place three times so they want it plowed they don't want really more than an inch on the ground at all at any time that's all they want so just a man, I mean, basically, if you are doing a big snowstorm, you're basically going to keep a truck here and just constantly be plowing this place, which is a big hassle, but you, I mean, it adds up fast. So now what I was making on this place, I only had it one year, was $75 to plow it, and... Yeah. $65 to salt it and basically you know the numbers don't sound super exciting and stuff like that but it adds up super quick so they would want because you know you're dealing with this business versus a house and you go in and you talk to the employees and they just have to sign off on a work order of what was done you plow it you make 75 bucks 
and then you say, hey, do you want me to salt? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you salt it? So you're making $140. Now, this is a pain in the butt if you're coming, you know, around 7.30 in the morning when there's a bunch of cars filling up before work or, you know, after work type of thing. But, you know, in the middle of the night, you can plow this thing. I mean, I could plow this in about 40 minutes to an hour. Remember, there's no wear and tear in your truck. You're not plowing six inches of snow at once. You're literally plowing a dusting of snow every single time. So you plow it. You go in. You say, hey, you want me to salt? Yeah, it's coming down super hard. Why don't you salt it? Okay, I'll salt it. And then the other thing is... Um, they wanted calcium chloride, which is, if you don't know what that is, it's super expensive and it's usually only sold in, you know, uh, one ton totes or by the bag. And it's just, it's very expensive. And what I did to win this bid was I said, can I just salt the concrete areas with calcium chloride? And then can I do the rest with regular, the asphalt with regular salt? And that was in the contract. They were okay with that. So that saved a whole bunch of money. And, I mean, th this was just a huge money maker for me. I was, I mentioned it in another video. I'm not going to really go into it. But I met up with this guy that was getting coffee here at the time. He had a light-duty truck. And uh, thought he was just, you know, a rookie and just getting started. I found out that he was not. He used to plow this lot, and we got a record snowfall one year like a record book snowfall I don't know if it was the most we've ever gotten but it was a lot and that season he made thirty thousand dollars the year before I plowed this this little dinky lot thirty thousand dollars because of snow hauling snow and because he was always there so don't think that you know you gotta charge a whole bunch of money because $140 adds up super quick when you're doing it five times per storm. Okay, it's high end. They're expecting it. And what I will add is if you know a place is high end like this, you know, you might hear someone that says like, oh, push for seasonal, push for seasonal, or push for hourly, or whatever. You won't get holes. My opinion is, is hourly is for lazy people, and it's you don't want to go there. It's not a, a good way to plow in my opinion, unless you're doing high, high, high volume and you make it up in the volume. But I, I just personally don't like it. You, you, I don't like it. But um, it's not like it's a wrong thing to do and I've done it and you got to do it sometimes and whatever else. But what you want to know is you don't want to come into this place doing a seasonal when they want zero tolerance because it's it's going to be an astronomical price because it varies from year to year how much snow there is and and if it's going to feel like you're getting taken advantage of if every time two flakes of snow comes up they're calling you and wondering where you're at they're going to get pissed off if you're like well it says it's an inch you know it's just not going to work so you really got to on on zero tolerance do a zero you know a zero tolerance plan and to reiterate zero tolerance is there's a minimum. They don't want any, absolutely no more snow than whatever the trigger is. So let's just say it's three inches. And they want full plows every time. They don't really want it to exceed an inch. And any time it's over an inch, they want a full plow. So that's what zero tolerance is. Okay, now moving on. I'm going to pause it quick and move to the next one here. Okay, so I'm going to do this. This building right here, this is a strip mall. Uh, we did this this last, or this winter, this past winter. Now, if you can see here the difference in the asphalt, this is, looks a little more faded right on this line if you can't. Right here is the cutoff, so it's from here and then over to here, over kind of over here, and then it ends here, and then there's a garbage can back here there's a sidewalk that goes back here for emergency exits that wraps around here this is sidewalk uh, there's a couple spots here this is side there's a awnings here and then this is sidewalk 
all the way along the front and then there's some sidewalk over here. Now for this, uh, first off, this is a seasonal without the 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 lawn, the the summer stuff in it. So this lady is was I was dealing with the property manager, and all they wanted was the the winter services. This is third the. Uh, we were made we made thirteen hundred dollars a month off this contract and it was f november through i don't even remember it was i think seven six it was either six or seven months okay so the square footage of this was about forty thousand square feet of plowable parking lot and i personally think that 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 we did this was an extremely uh great property for us last year we didn't get a lot of snow so we did extremely well on it but even if we would have gotten snow we still would have been totally fine so uh if you haven't been to sema i believe that's how you pronounce it it's s-e-m-a which stands for snow snow ice management association and um it's I th I'm pretty sure that's like a national thing. I don't think it's just a Minnesota thing. I'm pretty sure. I'm almost positive it's national. They give a lot of information there. I follow it. Well, I followed it more when I was just starting out. But they tell you how, how much salt per thousand you should be going through in different temperatures. And then they also tell you uh, how much plowing you can do in an hour to kind of bid how you're going to do it, which it's about... You can do about an hour of plowing per acre, and if it's if it has a lot of islands and like L's and all beautified up, then it's gonna cut down on that, and you'll be able to do less. But this is pretty wide open. All I did was started here with the plow truck. Well, there's I mean there's so many different things, ways you can do it, but. I took half of it, pushed it up this way, took the other half, pushed it up this way. Uh, sometimes you can do that. It doesn't matter. But um, also, when you're doing this type of work, something that's really just to know is it's a pain in the butt to have this sidewalk that comes right up alongside the. That's like actually. Well, it's not. A, it's just a pain in the butt to do sidewalks, anyways. But there's nowhere for this snow to go besides out in the street. So you gotta push it far enough out in the street or out in the parking lot so that the plow truck doesn't push it back up there. And yeah. So when I do, when I did this bid, what I took into account was I looked at all the businesses nothing was really open before eight o'clock in the morning and most of it was it's not a high-end place it's basically the key here when you're doing when I do seasonal contracts I really just want to make sure that they're not super picky and super gonna be taking advantage of the seasonal thing and wondering where I'm at and how come I didn't salt every single time it snowed and stuff like that now other places that you know, so you just have to ask those questions. Every time it snows, do you want salt? Or do you want it as a when it needs to be done or per call or even try to get that out of the contract so then you can charge them? That can be like an extra, which I didn't hear. This was bid at, uh, you know, salting about 10 times and doing the sidewalks pretty much every time. But we were able to get out and doing the do the shoveling soon enough and no one had walked on it that we never had to use we very rarely had to salt so we saved quite a bit of money there um you would also want to keep out of the contract i mean it's pretty much standard not to have snow hauling in the contract but you might want to give pricing on that and just make sure it's like in bold in your contract that says if we need to move snow it's going to be additional and it's going to be this much or whatever. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but so that's what I want to do there. Now I want to move over 
because I'm going to show you how to bid by the inch on this property here that we do. So this was a famous Dave's. Just went out of business. They owe us money, so that's great. It's always wonderful. And, okay, oh, I did want to tell you that this property, I think I might have did tell you this, but this property is about 40,000 square feet. This property is 10,000 square feet. I believe I want to say it was. If I'm, my, I'm pretty sure I'm not off. I, I always get kind of like worried that I am off. So what I did here was, th okay, so this is a per inch. So this was, every three inches was $100. Okay, now you can do this a couple different ways with the smaller ones. It's just, it's really easy just to say, so if it snows three inches, it's going to be 300 bucks. Or if it snows nine inches, it's going to be $300. If it snows one, you know, one to three, it'll be $100. That's just for the plowing. Then what I always do is I'm usually on, even on per inch, I do hourly, um, I do hourly shoveling. I'm at $55 an hour for shoveling. And then there's a minimum of however much you got to have that you want to have. Um, and then that's obviously per guy. So if I have send three guys out there, which I wouldn't on this, but maybe I have a crew that's got three guys in it, you know. So anyways, you get what I'm where I'm going with that. So this was, you know, and then you you just upsell the salt. And I don't do by the ton unless it's a huge see like there's different ways to do per ton and I'm just this is just a super easy example because I have two different properties that I did right next to one another now if this was a huge like church or something like that or you know where it has a hundred two hundred three hundred thousand square foot of property it's a lot easier just to bid it per ton but I still don't actually say it's two hundred dollars per ton because I don't like to lie to the client and say, "Oh yeah, I just put down, you know, five ton of salt because that's how much you really should have bid it at was however much that is when you only added one ton down there." So like this one, I bid this at ninety bucks. I said it's a hundred if you want to be on call, but if if I'm out here plowing and I just salt it afterward, actually I think it was eighty. I said I'll do it for 80 bucks every time and I'll be the you know I'll use my discretion on it so then I just upcharge you know 80 bucks there to do the salt like I said so it's not per ton it's just eighty dollars you're using about 20 bucks worth of salt if that um, so those are the three but you can also do like on on bigger building like if this property was this plus this plus this and this then you would and it was kind of it flowed better you know then i would probably do an inch breakdown so like one to three would be like you know like let's just say um 250 dollars i really have no clue but 250 bucks for one to three and then after and then maybe the next the three to six might be double that and then you know the next like six to nine might be three quarters of what 250 is or whatever I said the first one is um, I know I mean there's so much to talk about I don't even know um, there was more that I wanted to talk about but I can't remember right now so I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna end the video there and hopefully get some comments back from you guys and hope you like it thanks